Right, we've come down to Star Lane today, and as you can see from the makeup of the lake, there's lots and lots of areas to fish to that are quite snaggy. Now, don't get me wrong, doesn't mean all the fish are always in there, but from experience, I know this time of year they tend to really hunker across against the far margin. A couple of reasons for that, there's absolutely no swims on the far side, so disturbance over there is always kept to a minimum. Now, I do quite a lot of snag fishing, and snag fishing can be very, very productive and very, very rewarding, but what you've got to remember are the golden rules. You can't use your bait runners. Too many times over the years I've seen people casting up tight to snags and then casually flicking their bait runner on. Totally unacceptable. You've got absolutely nothing. If that, if that carp takes off and goes to the back of the snag, A, you're not getting it back. And in trying to do so, one or two things are going to happen. You're going to cause the fish certainly a lot of damage. You could then get cut off, resulting in potentially a tethered carp. So, you know, you just got to, you just got to think about what you're doing. So I'm going to run you through a few pointers and a few safety things that you must do all the time. So to start with, as I've said, I mean, I don't use a bait on a reel, so they're a big pit style reel, so they've got a front drag. Now, there you can see, as you can see, it's loose. Once the rod's cast that into position, it is absolutely locked up, so nothing, you cannot physically pull line from that reel. Don't worry, as long as you do some other things, your rod's not gonna get pulled in. Uh, a lot of people do think that, they just, you know, they're more worried about their rod going in, so they, they you know, in, in, in sense, they're putting the carp in danger. As you can see at the back here, I've got rod rests that go nicely with the neoprene style butt grips so that there's, there's no slippage there. They're, they're not coming out, they're not moving. I don't care how, how hard that carp pulls, they're not going to pop the rod out. As we move along up to the setup, um, you can see I use a line clip as well. What this does, it, it pinches the line in position and it creates a more severe angle on my line. So as soon as you get, I'll turn the alarm up a bit, as soon as you get a fraction of movement, you see me, I'm hardly touching it, I'm already getting beeps. The Delkim's set to its maximum sensitivity because I need to know as soon as a carp touches that hook bait and starts to move, I can be on my rod in a flash. Now, this is where the Elstow bobbin comes into its own as well because, unlike most bobbins, as you can see here, you actually pinch the line into position. Now, what that means is that as soon as your line moves, no matter by, by, by millimetre even, the bobbin is registering that movement and giving you more indication on your bite alarm too. If you use the, the ball clip style, whilst you'll still get an indication, of course you will, there's just that, that element of slippage that could, re, could result in a loss of sensitivity. So you tie all of these things in together, then trust me, you can fish to, to almost the severest of snags and land every single fish that you hook.